Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. I have a short video for you guys today. So after I created this asset inside a Substance Painter in my last video, which I will link the description down below, I brought it into Unreal Engine and just tried to do a good real-time asset presentation with the engine. So obviously I'm still super new to the engine myself, so every time I do this it's kind of more of a practice for myself and I just want to show the process with you. As I mentioned in the last video, I'm not going to use UDIM inside of Unreal Engine. I know there's a workaround, but I decided not to do that. So I first I have to separate my object according to the UDIM there on. I thought about this ahead of time when I was modeling, so when it comes to this step, it's pretty straightforward. Her hair is on its own UDIM, her clothes is on its own UDIM, the face is on UDIM, and also the, all the accessories is on UDIM. Uh, but inside of ZBrush, it's not separate like that yet, so I'm just gonna combine that according to that organization and export that version. So later I can bring those separate geometries into Unreal Engine together. After that, I have to prep my texture for Unreal Engine as well. So if we just go to the normal texture export area, choose the output folder, and then for the output template, we're going to choose Unreal Engine 4 packed. With this output setting, we're going to get three different kind of maps. One is base color, one is normal map, and another one is a packed RGB map, which represents ambient occlusion, roughness, and metalness. Opening Unreal Engine, I'm going to choose the film template and I'm going to choose a blank scene. And for the basic setting, I'm going to choose uh, ray tracing on and without any starter content. Here is a completely empty scene with some basic lighting setup already exists. So now I'm going to import my OBJ into Unreal Engine. So what I'm going to do is just to drag the OBJ file into the content browser. After that, I'm going to drag all the OBJ together into the scene so I can rotate them and scale them all together to the position that I like. One thing I see here I don't like very much is that you can see the edges of every polygon and uh, I was hoping for something that's a little bit more smooth because uh, that's definitely going to affect how a geometry looks. So what I'm going to do first is to import all the geometry into Maya first and go to Mesh Display and use Soften Edge on the entire geometry. So now the surface appears smoother uh, without us being able to see every polygon. And this is the version I'm going to import back into Unreal Engine and that solves the edge problem on our geometry. Here is the new geometry I imported into Unreal Engine. As you can see, it's much smoother and we can actually use this one for a good presentation. Now I'm going to start to build materials for each geometry. I create a new material for the eye and once you create it, if you just drag and drop to the geometry you want to assign this material to, you will get assigned, it's pretty convenient. And click into the geometry, uh, we will see that currently it's connected to nothing. So I will drag my three texture maps for the eye area into the content browser so I can start to connect the maps. Now I'm going to drag my three maps into my shader view and start to do the connection. As I mentioned before, we have a base color map, a normal map, and a stacked map. Uh, for the base color and a normal, it's pretty obvious where it goes. So for the stacked map, the red channel goes to AO, the green channel goes to roughness, and the blue channel goes to metalness. For the eye shader, I basically just have a very hard plastic material, so the maps are looking super simple. For the stack map, I only have the red channel, so I didn't have to connect anything else. After you connect it, make sure you save it and close it. So now I'm going to create another material for another area of the character. This shader is going to be for the hair material. Same thing, I'm going to drag the hair shader towards the hair geometry to assign it. And after that, I'm going to drag my three texture maps into Content Browser as well. Uh, one thing I didn't realize at the time is that all my maps, uh, the three different maps are the same name. The only thing that's separating them is the UDIM number by the end. So 
I actually have to create an individual folder for every geometry maps because every time you drag the same name map into Unreal, it's going to replace the one that has the same name. So now if I drag the hair texture into the same folder, it's going to replace the eye texture. If I just create a new folder every time for a new material, then that's not an issue. With this hair shader, I'm going to connect base color to base color, normal map to normal map, and also red channel for ambient occlusion, green channel for roughness, and blue channel for metalness. This is what it looks like after all the shaders and textures are connected. I also started to delete light as well. That's why you see the background is completely black. I'm going to rebuild the entire lighting environment. I'm still completely new to lighting in Unreal Engine, so I'm still at a stage where I will bring things in just to test them out, but they are not necessarily gonna be part of the end result. Under the lighting tab, there is a HDR option, which is something I always like to do in either Substance Painter or if I want to render in Arnode. It's always a way for me to provide my scene with some basic illumination. It is a way to give any shiny surface a proper reflection. So here I'm also testing out this option inside of Unreal Engine and under the map section, you can choose to use your own HDR. So far everything looks okay. My material is not exactly reacting the way I want it to and also the scene is overly bright. Um, I think I might need to get rid of all the lights just to start from scratch. But it is nice to know that that is an option if I ever need to use this. Once I get rid of the HDR, I need to figure out another proper way to get reflection on my asset. So I have this sphere reflection capture option inside of my scene and also I can choose to use my own HDR map with it as well, which gives my object some nice reflection without having to have the HDR environment. Another thing always bugged me is how my field of view is super distorted. So there's a little drop down menu on the left side and if you go inside, you can adjust the field of view of your camera and to get something that's a lot more appropriate for a portrait. And there's a third little thing that I figured out that really helped me navigating instead of Unreal is that the middle mouse pen is the kind of goes the opposite direction of where my mouse goes. To fix that, I have to go to Editor Preference and then go to Viewport. Then I have to select Invert Middle Mouse Pan. After that, my basic navigation is exactly like how I do in Maya. It's much more comfortable. Starting from a completely black scene because there's no light turned on in my scene, um, I will turn down some of the lighting elements separately just to show you what it does. So basically I have a spotlight in here, a sphere reflection capture that I mentioned before, a post process volume, and a HDR backdrop. I brought it back just to add some general lighting, uh, but in the end I got rid of it later on. For the lights in Unreal Engine, not for all of them, but for a lot of it, they have three different kind of mobilities. One is static, which is fully baked lighting. Another one is stationary, which is the shadow and bounce light uh, is baked, but the light itself can be dynamic. And the last one is movable, is fully dynamic lighting, which will update as you move the scenes around and move the lights around. So for all my lights, I try to set them as movable as possible so I can adjust them on the fly. But for this HDR light though, it doesn't really have those options. So one thing I realized about the HDR light is that once I do any kind of adjustments, for example, if I rotate the HDR, the light automatically bakes on its own. So even if I turn this off, I will still have lighting information in my scene, which uh, was kind of confusing in the beginning for me, why I turn everything off, but I still see lights in my scene. I think all you have to do is just to click build again and it will update. With those basic understanding, I'm starting to put some lights together and finally put my scene together. I got rid of the HDR, I'm just gonna rely on the sphere 
reflection capture to get reflection for my surfaces and I have this uh, soft uh, backdrop in the back which I use for a lot of my assets in the past and first I'm just gonna try out some spotlight and try to get some key light going on and later on I would do fill light and I'm thinking I'm gonna put a rim light in the back in terms of the color of the light again I prefer to use temperature instead of uh, choose some sort of color I was not super happy with the spotlight, I was not getting the kind of fall off that I was expecting so I changed my main light to rectangular light which was giving me much softer fall off and actually I put some sort of reflective metal material on my backdrop so there's some um, specular information in the background as well I thought that could be an interesting uh, background to have, maybe have some sort of kind of graphic look to everything I really like the real-time rectangular light, so I think I'm gonna do my fill light and also my rim light both use rectangular light. So the next one I'm gonna do is to add a rim light to my character. Uh, my main key light is on one side of the face, so there's a pretty harsh shadow under her chin and it would be nice to have a little bit of fill light to see the silhouette of the character. After that, there's still tons of shadow around this character and it's way too much dark places. So I need to create another light for a fill light. After I got all the main lights in my scene, and it's just a matter of balancing them out and see how much shadow I want and how dark I want my shadow to get. And also for the key light, uh, I will assess how bright I want the highlight to be on my character. I want to show you every lighting element in my scene and let you see what they are doing to my character. So I have an exponential high fog, which create this um, kind of like feel color for the entire scene and then I have my key light, I have my post processing volume, I have my rim light, my fill light and the last one is my sphere reflection capture which gives me nice reflections on my surfaces. I haven't got a chance to experiment with the post processing volume very much but there's a couple of things I tried that I really like. Uh, one thing I tried which I added to my seam is bloom effect which gives my asset a little glowy effect and from certain angle you even see some lens flares which I thought was pretty cool so I just added to my character. The last thing I did for my scene was to change my background material. The metal material I had before was a little bit too dark so I changed it to something a little bit brighter and a little bit more reflective and because of my sphere reflection capture it's reflecting my environment which has all those uh, kind of like bluish, orangish and some very bright areas which I thought was a very cool effect kind of make my scene look a lot more graphic and after some color correction inside of Photoshop, we have the image I'm showing you right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it's not really a tutorial, it's just me figuring out Unreal Engine one step at a time, but I hope it was entertaining for you. For the next little while of this channel, I'm going to do a bit more character work, which is going to involve the entire process uh, from modeling, sculpting, possibly using texture XYZ and texturing and uh, by the end I want to present some sort of um, organic real-time character. And all these assets are actually for a short film that Adrian is working on and we're thinking about making the entire film inside of Unreal Engine. That's why I started the whole learning process. So the goal of anything I make is to be able to make them real-time in the end. If you are interested in that process, which is going to be a long process, um, subscribe to my channel and uh, click the notification bell so you will get notified every time I have something new for you. 
And that is everything I have for you today. I will see you in the next one.